Hi, this is Sherry, and it's still the garage, but I think this is only like the seventh video I've done, and thank you so much for watching my video. So I went old school, and I printed out a card. I will hire someone to do the editing. I just don't have the time. I'm sorry, I, I have a job, and I have art to make, and I can't do it all by myself. At least I know how to do it, even though I can't actually do it. Fiverr. Fiverr. I'm going to do some Fiverr stuff. Okay. Healing Revivalist Art today. And then HealingRevivalistArt.com. But it also could be read Healing Revival I Start. Isn't that nuts? I didn't come up with that. That was totally the Holy Spirit. I went on Instagram. I wanted to open an Instagram account that was just um, Healing Revivalist. Someone's got that. Someone has that name. And I was like, oh, then no. How about Healing Revivalist start? Boom, there you go. It wasn't taken. I got it. And you know what? It means two things because that's how good God is. I He just shows up in these miraculous ways. So the first thing I want to talk about is today, it's a Saturday, and I went to the Bellis Fair Mall in Bellingham, Washington, to ask some questions about having a studio or putting some art out, you know, in October uh, for the holidays, because that was part of my plan that I have written out, a four-year plan. No, I don't have everything planned out in four years, but some things take a while like opening an art studio that, you know, probably would take about four years before you could be, you know, a good art provider, you know, uh, um, you know, someone that really speaks to people's hearts and their art is, you know, cherished. That's what I would like is that, uh, people would cherish my art. And I know the people that have my art do, and I'm so thankful, uh, that, you know, our eternal connection is reflected in the pictures, um, but also lots of things. It just really depends on what you see when you're the person. <coughs> <coughs> to me, I know all the people I've given my art to so far. And so that makes a very personal connection for me. Um because I know who has my art and I'm so thankful that they do and that they appreciate it. And, um, so I have a piece of my art. Um, I went to the Bella's Fair Mall and I talked with the artist studio there called Maker Studio. And I talked with a manager, Ian. He's not really a manager. He's like a co-op, co-director. And they were having some kind of meeting this morning because it seemed like there was two or three other artists there this morning, so I got to meet some of them uh, and showed him my art. And we talked about putting my art up in that studio. And so he's gonna send me an agreement. He says, uh, I showed him my art. I showed him three different pieces of my art. And he was very appreciative. So was someone named Todd. Well, Todd, I'm sure in the future we'll know who he is, but I just met you today. And then I also met Heidi. And then I think I met another person, but I don't remember the name. I'm sorry. But I remember three people's names, so that's 75%. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start selling my art at the Bellis Fair Mall in Bellingham, Washington. And I wanted to, excuse me, introduce you to my art with one picture. So... Uh, this picture is called Scenic. It's part of the yarn series. It is 21.5 centimeters by 14 centimeters, and I created it in 2020. Um, and the title of it's Scenic again. And so this is watercolor. Uh, this is a watercolor crayon. Uh, I think this is the only series that I have used the, um, that watercolor crayon, but this particular one is very um, reactive to the water and other paints. 
and I'll, I'll see, I'll try to get it close without it being blurry, I guess. So you can see the details of the watercolor because that's really the most important thing is that you don't mess with it too much. You know, the, it's wanting to tell you something um, without, um, you know, me trying to drill it down. You know, I don't, I don't have to explain it to you in any possible kind of way. That's the great thing about abstract art is because when I make it, I know it's for someone. Someone will buy it. It belongs to someone while I'm making it. I don't know who they are. Um, but what I say is, you know how you have a computer chip, you know, like for computers, the, um, the silicone chip, and it has patterns on it? That means something. You know, those silicone patterns mean something. I don't know what that means when I look at a silicone chip, but some people do know what it means. And it's kind of the same thing with my art because I use Daniel Smith watercolor, which has a lot of minerals. Uh, in one of my videos, I can't tell you which minerals there are, but like there's amethyst. I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't amethyst on this one because um, there is a sparkly gold to it. Uh, so it could be mica that makes the sparkles in some of the watercolor, um, but uh, things like opal, oh no, garnet. I have garnet. I have uh, Sleeping Beauty turquoise, which, you know, I don't make paint yet. I don't make paint yet, but I will make paint. Uh, but right now, Daniel Smith is the best paint I can get. So that's what I'm using until I get more advanced and I can make my paint on my own. Um, so there we go. That was, I talked about the studio in Bellis Fair Mall. I'm going to start selling my art and art definitions. What This is abstract watercolor. It's $1,000. 21.5 centimeters by 14 centimeters. That's like nine by six inches. And it's $1,000. That means it's like $19 and something a square inch. Um, and that's what it is. And uh, the last thing I have on here to talk about is everybody doesn't listen to the end and Jesus, you know, because I have to always make him the center of everything because that's just how I've lived my life so far. Um, I'm an artist, but I'm also a registered nurse. And I believe God's changed me because I've been around so many people that have passed away. You know, they're going through the dying process where they died um, in seven years. In six of those years, I only attended to the dying because I only did on-call work. So every person I went to see was dying or something was wrong. Um, and so that's a lot of exposure to emotions and feelings and love. And of course, when the person would pass away, they would move from the physical plane to the spiritual plane or the energy plane, whatever you want to call it, heaven, being with Jesus, uh, being with God, the one who created us. Um, and I just got changed just because I was there. I, I was just in the room when it was happening, when the angels come and take people away. Like, I, I've i seen the lights, the angel lights. Um, I would have to say, I never feared for a patient to go to hell. I never feared for a patient that God wasn't going to do absolutely everything within his power to let this person know how much he loved them, even if it requires them losing their body and just standing there like a spirit in front of him, realizing, oh, that wasn't me. I'm me. My body isn't me. I'm me. Um, and so everyone doesn't listen to the end. Uh and that's okay, because I can't learn everything. I don't know everything. If I listen to something that I don't understand, I just turn it. I move it, you know? And don't let bad things into your brain. Don't listen to people arguing and fighting. Don't listen to high tones. Nip it in the bud. Don't do it uh, for your own health, your own mental health. If you scroll up and you hear yelling, shots fired, whatever, just go past it, all right? It's causing anxiety. Okay, we're coming up on... Um, 10 minutes. So I'm going to say bye. Thank you for watching my channel.